Next, we're going to talk about the layers of the abdomen. And these are really important and they become even more important as you get into the layers in the uh, pelvis and perineum because they are continuous and they can communicate. So right here, I'm going to draw our skin level. So that skin is, it's skin. Um, the next layer that we're going to have to deal with is fat. And this fatty fascial layer in the abdomen is called camper's fascia. Camper's fascia. And some of that will continue into the pelvis and perineum area. And uh, it, it changes names as you go, um, depending on the area, and that is important later. The next area is a small, thin, membranous layer that is also very strong, and that is called scarpa's fascia, and that is important because during abdominal uh, suturing, for instance, during a surgery, um, the surgeon is going to try to attach um, these sutures in that area because it is so strong and membranous. So it will hold sutures, hold everything together well. So once we have all those layers, now we are to the muscles. So at the muscles, our first muscle is the external abdominal oblique. So we'll draw these in. And remember, it's got that large aponeurosis, uh, which we will draw in here in a second, because deep to that, we've got internal abdominal oblique. And then deep to that, we have the transversus abdominis. And recall that the external abdominal oblique muscles, they run obliquely as if you were putting your hands in your pocket. The internal abdominal oblique run like a fan and the transversus abdominis run horizontally. The other muscle that we need to worry about here is the rectus abdominis, which that's your six pack. So let's go ahead and we will draw in the linea alba right here. So um, I'm going to start with the external oblique aponeurosis. So this is going to run on top of, or I guess superficial to, the rectus femoris. Let me redo that. Because we need room for other. Okay, and let's just change the color just a little bit here. So um, the internal abdominal oblique is also going to have that aponeurosis that is going to run superficial, contribute to the linea alba. And then here's where it gets tricky is the transversus abdominis. Uh, let's make it this color. So this is superior, superior to the arcuate line. This is going to go under and completely envelop the rectus abdominis. Now, uh, what's different is that underneath the 
uh, arcuate line. This layer right here, the aponeurosis of the transversus abdominis, does not go deep to the rectus femoris. It actually is going to go superficial to So below the arcuate line, the rectus abdominis muscles are exposed, or they don't have an aponeurosis, deep beneath the arcuate line. So let's pull up another co color to keep going down our layers. How about that color? So right here, you've got the transversalis fascia. And actually, um, I screwed that up. That should attach there. So this transversalis fascia um, is important because that's, that's deep to all of the muscles. So the next important layer that we have is the peritoneum. So underneath all of this, that's when you're finally getting into the abdomen. Um, all of these layers are continuous uh, superficially. I'm sorry. All of these layers are continuous inferiorly. Uh, and become important when you get into the genitalia and the other layers of fascia. The next thing that we need to do, is, let's go ahead and get rid of that, um, is talk about the remnants of the umbilical cord. Okay, so the umbilical cord gets obliterated after or as you're born uh, after birth. It goes through a series of transformations basically to um, form important structures in the adult body. So here we are looking at um, we are inside the body and looking anteriorly. So imagine yourself as if you were the stomach. This first thing we're going to talk about is the median umbilical ligament right there. Um, goes down the midline. That is the obliter obliterated remains of the uracus. Um, next, you've got two ligaments next to it, and don't confuse these. These are the medial umbilical ligaments, and those are the remnants of the umbilical arteries um, from the embryo growth. Um, another important thing are these lateral umbilical folds. It covers the inferior epigastric um, artery and nerve. And the reason that's important is because down here, down here you've got the deep inguinal ring, which becomes very important for transfer of structures from inside the body to outside the body, but also is clinically relevant because that is the site of hernias. So uh, going up, you've got this round ligament of the liver, and that is the remnants of the umbilical vein. And then you also have this really broad thing that actually separates the quadrants of the liver, called the falciform ligament. Um, and that is also the remnants of the umbilical vein. 
uh, if you want to see these better, you can look at Netter's plate 249. Um, but that is the current overview of the anterior abdomen.